Okay, we're going to have a lecture today on uh, heat pumps and AIRC 1080. Um, the, a heat pump is basically an air conditioner in reverse. Of course, you all, you, you all know that, don't you? The air conditioner in reverse. What makes a heat pump a heat pump is a reversing valve. Um, when you go out to an air conditioner unit, you want to know whether or not it's a heat pump or a regular air conditioner. Uh, look in the condensing unit near the compressor and see if you see one of these. If you see one of these, guess what? It's a heat pump. A uh, heat pump is an air conditioner in reverse. Uh, this is a reversing valve. In the air conditioning mode, a heat pump is a regular air conditioner. The indoor coil is the evaporator. What does the evaporator do? It absorbs heat from the air inside the house, removes heat. The outdoor unit is a condenser, rejects heat that you remove from the inside. Um, a regular air conditioner. Now in the heating mode, that's when uh, uh, the reversing valve puts the refrigeration cycle in reverse. Um, the indoor coil becomes the condenser. What does a condenser do? Rejects heat, right? The outdoor coil becomes the evaporator. The evaporator absorbs heat. Now, there's heat in the air um, all the way down to minus 460 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, that's the point where there's no more heat in the air. So if it's 20 degrees outside, theoretically, there's heat in the air that the evaporator can absorb and reject inside. Typically, heat pumps don't um, work well at 20 degree outdoor temperature. Usually uh, when the temperature outside gets to 30, 35, 40 degrees, uh, that's the temperature at which a, a heat pump no, no longer works well in the refrigeration cycle. That's when you have to have the auxiliary heat. Um, but the reversing valve is what makes the heat pump a heat pump. On the reversing valve, you've got uh, four pipes you have one pipe on one side and three pipes on the other side. Um, the one pipe is always the discharge coming off the compressor. Always. Uh, on the side with the three pipes, the pipe in the middle is always the suction line going to the compressor. Always. Common discharge, common suction. The two outside pipes will switch position from suction to discharge suction to discharge and depending on what mode the unit's in it depends on whether the outside lines are um, the discharge line or the suction line so you know to be familiar with the reversing valve is, is a good thing and will help you to understand how a heat pump works we've got a reversing valve here that's been cut apart and you can see the internal um, the internals of it you can see the piston how it shifts how it works have you all seen this? No. I will pass this around and let you all take a look at it. The heat pump reversing valve does uh, fail from time to time. It's a very expensive repair. Um, if you have to change this out, it's a major repair. A lot of companies uh, will charge upwards of uh, six, seven, eight hundred dollars even more to change a reversing valve. It's a very expensive repair. A lot of times if a reversing valve fails and the unit's not under warranty, um, the company will usually try to sell the customer a new outdoor unit or, or an entire new system. Uh, either way, the reversing valve is an ex expensive repair. Um, and of course, like I said, the reversing valve is what makes a heat pump a heat pump. Uh, the valve has a solenoid coil, an electric solenoid coil that uh, will shift the valve. Uh, it will cause the valve to shift from heating to cooling and cooling to heating. As a general rule, most, com most heat pump manufacturers design their systems so that the reversing valve solenoid coil, which we don't have the, sil the electric solenoid coil on this valve, uh, but most manufacturers design the system so that the heat pump solenoid coil is energized in the cooling mode and de-energized in the heating mode. Um, a lot of times uh, in the summertime when you turn your unit on, if it's a heat pump and it shuts off, you'll hear a hissing sound. Sounds like the air brakes on a big truck. Y'all ever notice that? The reason for that is that 
um, the valve is, when you turn it off, the valve shifts back to the heating mode or the default mode, and you can hear the valve shifting. Some manufacturers will actually uh, design the system so that the reversing valve is energized in the heating mode. Um, so there's, one, there's no one size fits all. However, most companies uh, manufacture their heat pumps so that the reversing valve solenoid coil is energized uh, in the uh, cooling mode. Um, if you have a heat pump that, say, it's in the spring, you turn your air conditioner on, and the heat pump running and heating, um, you know, what's the first thing, one of the first things you're going to check? Check that, that solenoid valve. You know, see if you've got low voltage to it. Um, you know, if you got voltage to it, it's still not shifting, you know, the, the solenoid could have failed, and the unit's not shifting into cooling. Uh, that's one of the things that you can check. So the reversing valve is what makes a heat pump a heat pump. Um, also, a heat pump has another component uh, on it that's different from a regular air conditioner, and that is it has a defrost cycle. Uh, if a system is in the heating mode and it's cool outside, and uh, you know the outside unit is now the evaporator, uh, the evaporator operating temperatures of that outside coil can drop below freezing. And there's always moisture in the air at any given time. It's, it's not hardly any situation on earth where there's zero percent relative humidity. There's always some humidity in the air and uh, frost will develop on that outdoor coil. And so you have to have a means of defrosting that coil to get rid of it. So uh, the reversing valve, special component for heat pumps, and also the defrost cycle is a special component for heat pumps. Also, heat, most heat pumps have a electric auxiliary heat, so when the temperature gets below the balance point, um, 35, 40 degrees, it will call for the auxiliary heat strips to be energized to add additional heat to heat the structure. Um, heat pumps have come a long way in the last few years. The, uh, the newest ones are very efficient, and uh, they're very, they do a very good job of, uh, of heating or cooling the structure. Um, there's different types of heat pumps. The text talks about uh, air to air, uh, air to water, ground source heat pumps, water to water. What does all that mean? Well, usually on an air conditioner, let's say air to air, what does that mean? It means that you are using air as a medium of exchange. All right, let's go back and talk about basic fundamentals of, of HVACR. What's one of the primary laws of thermodynamics? Heat always travels toward a cooler temperature. Uh, and in heating, air conditioning, and refrigeration, what do we do? We mechanically remove heat from one place where it's not wanted, reject it to another place where it doesn't make a difference, where it doesn't matter, or uh, we either add heat. Uh, and, of course, the medium of exchange is usually air or it can be water. Uh, either one is, um, you know, is a medium of exchange. Uh, an air-to-air -air heat pump has two air coils. It has two forced draft fans. Your indoor coil is an air coil, your outdoor coil is an, is an air coil. I'm sure you've heard the term air cool condenser, water cool condenser. Well, what's an air cool condenser? Uh, it uses outside ambient air as a medium of exchange. Uh, it has a fan that blows the air, forces the air across the coil. The ambient air is typically cooler than the refrigerant condensing temperature or the temperature of the refrigerant inside the coil, so you have a, a heat exchange scenario. Uh, let's say typically you've got a 125 degree condensing temperature and you've got a 95 or a 95 or 100 degree outdoor ambient temperature, you still have a temperature differential. The ambient air is cooler than the temperature of the refrigerant inside the coil, so therefore you have a natural heat exchange. It goes all the way back to the fundamentals of HVACR. Heat always travels toward a cooler temperature, even though 95 or 100 degree outside temperature seems hot to us, it seems you know like it's pretty warm, but the temperature of that refrigerant inside the coil is still cooler um, than, than the, the air. I, I'm sorry, I got that backwards. Temperature of the refrigerant inside the coil is still uh, much warmer, usually 25 or 30 degrees warmer than the ambient temperature as a general rule. So an air coil uses air as a medium of exchange to remove the heat uh, or to move the heat. Uh, a water coil uses water as a uh, medium of exchange. 
Um, you, you hear the term water source heat pump. What is a water source heat pump? Um, well, typically, in a lot of instances, a water source heat pump has an air coil and a water coil.